What if you could help others to find the power to heal themselves, physically, emotionally, and spiritually? When I started teaching my classes, it was in 2002, and I was just doing the past life regressions and contacting the subconscious part. But then as the time went on and we found how powerful this was and what we could do with it, a lot of the students began saying, you know, advanced past life regression doesn't really tell what it's all about. This is so much more than that. We think you should change the name. So it was a few years ago, we decided to change the name to Quantum Healing Hypnosis Technique. And this is the healing technique that we've now been teaching it, well, since 2002, that's 12 years. What if you could time travel with them? Visit mythical places or angelic realms, other worlds, other galaxies. Help others to speak to their higher selves. You can. Dolores has taught thousands of people from across the world how to use QHHT and now you can learn her method by going directly to DoloresCannon.com and don't forget to mention the discount code MORETALKS. Have you ever wondered, can you communicate directly with spirit guides, teachers, or non-physical consciousness, or even our higher selves? What would they tell us? My name is Kevin Moore, and since 2015, I started to practice a form of communication which is termed channeling. I have been interviewing experts on my talk show to find out does life continue after we die? And can we communicate with those that have crossed over? With each expert I spoke to, they all had different ideas. Is there knowledge from the past which could be shared with the present moment? So I thought, why not just speak to the non-physical world directly through channelers around the world? And that's what I set out to do. They call us channelers will take the viewers on a journey into the phenomena known as channeling. And my main goal with this docu-series is to bring a new understanding and awareness to channeling by looking within ourselves and asking, is it truly possible that we can all use this innate ability? Francis Evans and I live in New Zealand. I live in a place called Whangarei, which is the very almost the, the top end where it's the warmest. Yeah, I don't like cold and we're in winter. So um, my background, well, you know, I was a child of the 60s. So I was originally yeah, a flower, one of the, the first of the flower children in, in New Zealand. And, and it was a, you know, I, we, we were just, you know, following the rest of the world, trying to be hip and, uh, and loving and, and all that stuff. And one Sunday afternoon after a sort of heavy weekend, we were hanging out with a few friends and they well, we were bored. And I said to them, what we're we going to do, we're bored. And this one character says, why don't we go to the, um, to the spiritualist church? That's always good for a laugh. So we go along, <laughs> along to the spiritualist church and we're sitting in this room with these old ladies, right? And in a circle and we're sitting there and I'm I'm being trained as a scientist so I'm you know I'm a scientist that I'm observing like an experiment here and and she's going around and she's saying to these people you know um she's saying hello dear and 
behind you I can see you know a lovely bunch of roses and, and, and all this stuff right and I'm watching and on the walls of this little room there's pictures and in the glass in the sort of reflection of the glass of one of these pictures I see this picture of a woman in a bridal gown with a with a, one of those old-fashioned head things on and and a bunch of flowers out of down. And she comes around to me. She says, oh, hello, dear. I see behind you there's a lovely lady in a bridal gown with a beautiful bouquet of white flowers. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute. So I have a look, and the picture on the wall is gone. It's not there anymore. And I'm thinking, ooh, that's weird. That's a bit bloody strange. But anyway, so... So we end up going away, and I'm thinking to myself, some strange goings on here. Like, how do I answer this question scientifically? So it turns out that we go uh, back the next week to check out, <laughs> and there's an entirely different group of people there. Right? And I meet this woman called Margaret who was really the influential person in my life. So we, we meet her, and I, I actually met her through another of her friends, Lily, who was an Irish woman. And Margaret was Scotch with a very strong accent. Right? So she was really there. And uh, we, I got talking to, to Lily, and I'm telling Lily how I'm God, blah, 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 blah. You know, young, a young 20-year-old who, who uh, if you, you, you understand this, when you're young, you know everything, and when you get old, you know nothing. <laughs> so I know everything, right? And I'm telling her, and Lily's trying to explain something. And Margaret comes up over and listens for a while, and then she says, shut up, Lily. And I'm sort of taken back. I said, you can't speak to what I said. <laughs> and, and that was how I met Margaret. And from then on, Margaret used to have a group of people. Now, it turns out that in 1956, when she was in Christchurch, she was wondering, what's my mission in this life? And... She was told, in the inner world, she was told, your, your mission starts when the children come with the flowers. All right? So in 1970, she's in, in Wellington, and suddenly all these young people come out of the woodwork and find Margaret. I was one of them. Yeah? So we had these uh, weekly meetings and... On a, on a Sunday, one Sunday every fortnight, we would sit to what she called meditate. So we'd all sit there meditating in this, in this sort of thing. And she would say, you know, just whatever you get, give it out. Well, of course, that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> you know, right? but, uh, and, and then later on, a little, maybe three or four months later, I got invited to go to her Monday evening class. And I got there and we were doing it, the, you know, the meditation, you know, give it out what you're getting. And I started getting this, this thing. I got, Mary had a little lamb, see? And I went, nah, I'm not saying that. I was not a dick do I look if I say that. So Next week, I go along and I'm sitting there meditating and I'm sitting there and Mary has a little lamb. And I'm going, no, no, no. Next week, we go along and I'm sitting there. Mary has a little lamb. I'm going, no, this is just impossible. So I go, all right, give over. Mary, I'm getting, Mary has a little lamb. And across the other side of the room, this woman spikes up. She says, that's for me. Uh, and I went, hang on, you know, like something is shifted here. Right? And from then on, you know, I used to give this stuff out, like still a scientist, still observing everything. And, 
and trying to fit it into the into the known world. And uh, yeah, so effectively, Kevin, I was taught channeling, but it wasn't called that in those days. It was called being, you know, meditation. This is meditation. And Margaret used to go into these states and she used to channel, though she didn't call it that, a character called Artu. And she, who was this Chinese character, right? And she would sit and give it out and her Scott accent would disappear completely. And she would start speaking in this sort of broken Englishy Chinese sounding thing and her whole body would change. It's like she'd shrink in her seat. And I went, this is fascinating, you know. Oh, this is good stuff, uh, you know. <laughs> all, all of that, right? And then, and then uh, I went, then I went back to England for, for um, oh, two years. And all sorts of things happened in England that, that, and I dropped all this. I didn't do any of this stuff. I wasn't, I wasn't party to this. And then I went and did primal therapy with a, with a uh, American woman who was, uh, who, when, when I left her, or she went back to India, she gave me a copy of Seth Speaks before Seth ever came out. It, it, was, it was her mother sent it to her from New York, got it from Prentice Hall before it was released. It was like, this is, this is one of those things, you know, like in life, concept you know, these things that turn up with, and you think, what the hell was that about? So, you know, all these links come about. So I came back to, to New Zealand and, uh, and I started a Seth group, would you believe? Right? I said, I got this Seth group going. And I tracked in a woman from New York State, from uh, Bingham, who yeah. had been with one of the guys who had been with Jane Roberts and Seth in their Tuesday classes. And he had all the tapes of all these sessions. I was like, boy, that's a connection. So, so we did that. And then, uh, and then, one day we were talking about this and I said, oh, you know, I was taught how to do this shit. You know, I, I was taught a year, a couple of years, three, four years ago. And one of the guys who was an engineer said to me, oh, give it a go. Show us how it's done. See, so I started going and I started channeling a character called Ispa. And Ispa claimed to have been a teacher of mine. In, in a lifetime. And so for probably four years, you know, we'd go, I'd, we'd have this Monday class and Kerry would say, do spook, go on, do spook. <laughs> and so we ended up with hundreds of tapes of this channeling stuff, which I never listened to. I can't stand it, see? So I never listened to any of it. And they all said it was it was all right, it was good stuff. Um, and at the same time, I started training in hypnotherapy. And during the period of doing hypnotherapy, I learned how to take myself into very deep trances, like I could go into a really deep state. And so putting the two together, this started to make transformations and round about 1992 Mercury came through and he claimed to be nothing we, you know people would say you know, who are you he'd say nothing say so, what do you mean nothing <laughs> I, mean, I mean what the hell does that mean uh, and he'd say nothing so it took a while to get to understanding when he meant nothing. It's like when you go into the state, 
you give it up. Yeah. So I, I know that, that's that's sort of like the bones of my background. I can only imagine how fascinating those Seth tapes must have been back in the day. Um, and they, I, yeah. they were extraordinary, you know, because you you got to hear both Seth and Seth too. Oh, Seth too. Yes, right. And I always went, you know, where, what did Seth too say? He always said, "I don't come from anywhere." And I went, "Is is this the same thing? Is this this nowhere business? You know, this nothing?" Seth too was like a more advanced version, and I'm using really basic words here to describe what Seth too was, but it was something greater than obviously Seth. Um, God, those tapes would be collector's items right now, I think. <laughs> they would be, yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so we've all got a journey. There's something uh, that influenced us along the journey. Seth was uh, something that I got into as well. Actually, I think the, the original Seth house, where all the channeling took place, is now a museum. I believe it is. So Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. I mean, I, we, well, I wrote, I was talking to, to Robert Butts when Jane was started getting sick. We invited him to come to bring her to New Zealand because New Zealand has a quality about it that is sort of different from most places in the world. Interesting. Yeah, and that was probably so close to them coming over, but it just wasn't supposed to be. And yeah. with Mary as well, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure you honour her for what she did for you uh, to take you into that. I'm sure that we've all got one teacher that really helped us yeah. but, and that believed in us as well to just push us over that edge. Yeah. Because how did you get past the public fear of channeling then? Because that's, I guess, a common thing for people. Oh, hugely difficult hugely difficult i mean i was living you know two worlds i was going to work as a scientist and doing this shit on the, on the other side you know like i was and it was not public as such it was in the beginning just in a in a sort of closed group uh and then eventually i got more and more confident and and other people said you you should do this you know let, let's go out and take it to you know and advertise and have people come along and uh and i had a lot of support in that um and eventually we we ended up uh, <laughs> creating a stir with the christians so it was <laughs> was uh Sort of like, uh, and that ended up with us being on television uh, and not a great experience because they twisted as they do. So, you know, it was hard going. Uh, and then at a certain point, uh, you know, I just went, you know, you, at some point you have to accept yourself and what you are. And, and I had something else because, you see, I... I, when I did hypnotherapy and I became a, a therapist and I started having clients and, you know, they used to drive me crazy. So, so a friend of mine said, why don't you just do astrology with them? And I started, I, I, I knew nothing about this astrology shit. So I, I started doing that and I started to realize, actually, this stuff totally describes who you are. And over a period of time, I got more and more into doing astrology, and eventually I came across what's known as the Sabian symbols. And the Sabian symbols themselves were channeled back in 1930s. Right? And if you know anything about astrology, the midheaven where, is where you're going. This is where your purpose lies. And the symbol for my purpose is... And in, in the, the key word for it is channeling. And I went, hang on a minute, this is, this is even more bizarre than, than anything, you know. So at that point, I went, you know, I've got to just do what I've been sort of 
you know, obviously this is a birth thing. This is come in from birth and, you know, stop fighting it and stop fighting yourself, you know. Did anyone else in the family have uh, any sort of, um, I mean, I know we, you, you would say we all come in with gifts, right? Which we all yeah. do. But did anyone, was anyone in the family sort of open to using any gifts or? No, 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 no. My father was was complete uh, atheist, agnostic, and 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 had nothing to do with spirituality whatsoever until I talked to him about a year before he died, and he and changed his mind, and uh, it it uh, I believe it allowed him to actually move over you know he was so frightened of death until after then yes i'm sure that that did help him to transition over as well uh incredible so your background is as an industrial chemist yeah and as you say well you probably would say that you've always been researching because obviously that's what science is about as well but you're a new type of researcher now into consciousness that's where you've gone where did this become full time for you then? When did you sort of say, you know what, this is my full time work? Was that more towards retirement or? No, 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 no. I, um, when I came back from England in 1974, I came back as as I was going to be a great therapist to see, and then I didn't, you know, I started to realise I didn't know much about this, so I then went and studied. Uh, hypnotherapy and psychotherapy before it was popular, before everybody was doing this. And eventually uh, I became involved with neurolinguistic programming and and all of that stuff and uh, and modeling. And actually uh, my second wife and I, well no, she she had been, to England, around the world, and they had model channels, right? So they had a, a a way in which all the channels basically did it. And when I looked at what I did, it was exactly the channel. It was exactly this model. So, you know, like I knew when I was doing what I was doing and why I was doing it, you know, and, and I've kept some of those uh, elements in in because I think it's it's sort of like it's all like, almost like a safety mechanism. Well, that's interesting. So uh, your wife uh, currently now she's always been into this subject. She's always supported. Yeah, yeah. We've always yeah, and of course Libby is my daughter-in-law, and you know my 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 personal family have all had channeling sessions. So they've all seen it firsthand. Oh, no, maybe not the eldest, but the other two at least. So something interesting about yourself as well. I was watching um, an interview that you did, and you talk about the name um, Merkadec and that it's just really a, of a way for you to communicate uh, as the, we communicate with email. So the name is just like an email address. And I thought that was a fascinating way that you put that. Mercredin. And, and what he says is, is it's just a name. It's just like, he says, this is just like an email address. It's like, you know, so you know where, who you're talking to. <laughs> and, and he says that it, it just means a teacher of mercy. That's a really interesting way to put it as well, you know, this whole idea that if we just look at it as a way to communicate as we do with email. I've never heard anyone say that before. And that is a really easy way to sort of understand it, that, we, you know, we've all got an email address, right? And the name is just a name in a sense. But would you say there's something behind the name, though? Because, as you say, it's Master of Mercy. Um, well, I, I don't know. I suppose that that from that realm, if you like, what, or, or that field, uh, it has a resonance. You know, he talks a lot about resonance, you know, and, and when we 
when we look at things like unity, when, when, when you go, everything is one, okay? Now we're done. You see, there's nothing to do when everything is one. Yeah, everything is one. Um, what does uh, Merkaden say about our purpose for being here then? Um, well, I, this is, I, I, I sort of, you know, for, for, for me, what I've gained from it, I think, is this is the evolution of consciousness. It's like, it's like we, we came down by, by, he talks about two paths, you know, the path of differentiation and the path of integration. This is the fundamentals of, of mathematics. See, so, so from the one differentiation all the way down till you get to the point where you can't differentiate anymore, you know, because you've arrived at a, at a turning point and then you begin integration. And we're on, in the process of integrating, you know. So, so if you like, this Zoom call is a great integration of all the consciousnesses alive on planet Earth at this point, every one of us could join and talk to anyone else. First time in history that this has been available. Yes, and you would probably say that your scientific background actually served you with some of the information that you're able to bring through, because I'm guessing there's a resonance of deeper sort of scientific information that you're able to sort of understand. Well, Absolutely. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I have channels for people who are way outside of my abilities to understand this stuff, you know. So they get this stuff and I go, what the hell was that about? But I don't, see, Kevin, I don't remember anything. You see, you know, like I go into this space, it's a giving over and... When I come back, uh, I've got someone on the other end of whatever it is, or a group or whatever, uh, and they're all doing what they're doing. And I'm thinking, I wonder what has been said. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, and that's a, a sort of strange thing as well, you know, that you have to get used to not needing to know. Yes, because there's a lot of uh, conscious channels that I've interviewed, not so many deep trance channels like yourself. Have you thought about why that is, that there's a sort of, um, there's less and less sort of deep trance channels, there's more conscious channels? Uh, I'd love to do that, but I think it's because, you know, I, I probably would have uh, a difficulty not interfering do you know, like when you know, when there's something coming out, yeah, you know, like I was taught very early on is to, to instill or have an intention that if there's something that is being said that is not true, stop. Right? And it's come up a few times in, in early sessions, for particularly where I'd be going along and then suddenly I'd say, stop. You know, like ignore those last comments. They are not real. They're not true. Yes, because how do people discern? Uh, that's always been a question of mine yeah. when people start to want to channel for themselves as well. Yeah, you, you have to be, uh, I think you have to be really sceptical. I was, for, for most of this experience, I have been totally sceptical. You know, I, I don't have any answers for where this is coming from, you know. So up until quite recently, up and really t- until Libby said to me, look, I want to I be involved in this, did I actually think, hey, you know, I'm not, I'm not really, um, I'm not really crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's been quite a solo journey. Yeah, yeah, and I think for a lot of people, take you know, 
starting up, it is a solo journey. And, you know, like you, you can have a lot of confidence to do something, but it doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it, you know, so where is the, where is the distance from, you know, from you to it? There's, 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 a stra- there's, a, there's an interesting relationship that we have with, I don't know, the, this alter ego or this alternative uh, reality that, that we are resonating with. Yeah, this is fascinating. So with Merkadan, he talks about, well, he, he exists, he says, between the boundless... Um, the, well, the endless and the boundless, in a sense, right? And even getting that understanding in my head, it's it's almost impossible. But what the, what has this process done for you, in a sense, of the nature of reality now for you? What, what all this is about? I look. I, I've come to the conclusion, right? And and it's sort of come from a huge number of things I've come to the conclusion that um, we exist inside of our own uh, creation we exist and whatever our experience is comes from us uh, deciding it's 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 a decision point so you know like like whatever you believe is true. Whatever you say about yourself, that's true too. It doesn't have to agree with anybody else. But whatever you think, you've got it. It's coming to you. And and so one of the things that Mercredin uh, said a, a few times, which is, you know, conscious um, karma is now instant. It, you know, in the old days, karma used to go over lifetimes, but now you do something and within maybe a year, you're going to get the consequences of that in your life. So he talks a lot about consequence, you know, and, and how you live your life has, comes with the consequences of doing that, whatever it is, has consequences, you know, and we, and that is karma. So, you know, he's really about be careful what you wish for and be willing to take the consequences of it. You know, and we could say this is like a lot of people got rich very quickly and then they had to deal with the consequences of being rich and a lot of them didn't. You know, a lot of people have fallen foul of the consequence of wealth. They're not, you know, not equipped to deal with that. Absolutely. And that idea of producing or creating your own reality, I'm, I'm starting to see it. I'm starting to get it right that yeah, it's, um, it's not instantaneous always, but if it's what you truly desire and if it's and if it's what you uh, are going to go out there to uh, uh, pull towards you it's going to happen maybe not in the exact uh, un, you know outline that you thought it was going to be but it's, it's something near or what's best for you is going to come in and that and we've all experienced that haven't we in so many ways exactly exactly you know and and we think look i i think this is a th- the the point about unification or integration or or oneness is we individually do not manifest our world separate from the manifestation of of the uh, the field that you are living in uh, so for me there's a lot about he talked Recently, he started talking more and more about nested fields, how, how the, great, the greatest field that you can perceive of is called the cosmic. Yeah? And within the cosmic field, 
there are myriads of galactic fields. And within our galactic field, there are millions of solar fields. And within our solar field, there are these all these different planetary fields. And we live with what he calls the planetary guardian. And the planetary guardian maintains the world as, as a environmental structure. So human beings think that they are going to affect the planet, they're mad. He says the planetary guardian is shaking off the humans as if they're fleas on a dog's back. Right? So he says, don't think that you are going to affect the planet. The planet is going to survive it. And it's going to, you know, and this is about the elevation of consciousness. It's, it is human beings beginning to evolve consciousness, not because of choice, but because of necessity, because we don't, are not a very clever animal. <laughs> no, no. Well, I mean, Mercadan in the past, probably decades ago, probably uh, spoke with you about the coming changes that we're now experiencing. This has all been predicted yeah. in your in your in your words and your teachings. Yeah, yeah, and I think this is sort of like everyone could see it, you know, going back for a very, very long time. You know, we have been moving, you know, and gaining uh, momentum. You know, the, the shift in consciousness is r rapid. And, you know, if we look back, say, to the, uh, to the early 1900s, pretty slow, but it's gained and gained and gained, and we've had turmoils and, and wars and, you know, endlessly getting faster and faster and bigger and bigger and da 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 And now we're at the turning point and the shift. And, of course, what Mercudan is saying is that uh, there's a new species arrived, and this is what he calls the, the you know, the, the new children, the the new species, and they uh, have a different, according to him, a different neuro neurological wiring system. So they have an advanced um, uh, software hardware, you know, their hardware is more advanced than ours, and they uh, can communicate, which, which we can't. So almost like a a point, as you say, in uh, human evolution, and we barely understand the brain, and maybe there's some part of their brains which is uh, active, right, um, and uh, which we don't use as much, maybe. I, I think what he's saying is that we are focused on the brain <clears throat> rather than the whole being is a light ball of, of neurological, uh, you know, things that are resonating just as if, you know, just as if a uh, electrical field is pulsating, you know, and if you, if, if it's not in the brain, let us assume that it's for a moment, it's just the, the neurology of your, of the nerves in your skin, right? That every time you touch, you know, that you're in contact with somebody, you are, you somehow pick up, their whole being and you can read it yeah because if you can just focus on the brain maybe you maybe you have shut down the 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 software that does the reading you know so we are yeah i think that's more of what he's saying while we're at this midpoint as well let's just remind the audience of your website it is um, channelingmercredan.com and people can book on there for uh, readings or group yeah. readings, private readings obviously yeah yeah, and yeah, mostly we do them through Zoom you know, like Zoom is, a, is such a fascinating and fabulous 
tool to communicate with the world, you know, and, mm-hmm. and you know, effectively, yeah, you know, we, we in our brains, to talk, go back to the brain, we think mm-hmm. that, you know, through an electronic thing, there's no connection. What a load of, you know, because we are one being. We, when we were never separated. The only thing that separates us is our thinking that says, I am, I am me, I'm Francis over here, and I'm separate and distant and nothing to do with Kevin over there, when in fact you and I are one cell in the whole, you know, and we... You know, and, and we move in that hole and we come along and we touch each other in that hole and, you know, our touching goes out and touches other people all around us and so on it goes. Thank you for that. So the way I see it, and, and maybe um, we can go into this just a little bit, but, uh, you know, channeling is like a natural gift in a sense, um, you know, and... For some people that may uh, ask, well, what will channeling do for me if I, you know, was to practice it? I think that channeling uh, aligns you with the whole. I think that what it does is you start to feel as though there is no separation, right? So, so in a sense, you you feel connected it's like it's like you're not connected to individuals just connected to the essence of everyone who's there and and therefore your judgments about people disappear you just see that that people arrive where they are doesn't matter where they are they arrive there because of of the nature of their background and their environments and their learning, you know, over maybe lifetimes. But you know, Mercury Dan is not a f- not a fan of time. So he so as a not a fan of time, he's not a fan of past lives which require time. He says that everything is in a is in a resonance in the now. And so when you have a lifetime, it's because that lifetime resonates with you now, where where you are right now, you have a resonance with it. And this is why there are hundreds and hundreds of Mary Queen of Scots. Yeah. Wow. Yes. See, so, (laughs) so, you know, like, it's like, whoa, hang on. He's, he's really coming out of the left field by, by not carrying on with all these other ideas that have, what he would say, consequences. Right? So as soon as you have a past life, you now have a timeline. You now have history. You now are not present here right now. But what about people who say that some of these past lives, which, okay, I, I, I could go as far as to say that they're happening in the now. There's no time, right, in a sense. Not yeah. that I understand it, right, on this level, but just say that that's the case, right? And some people say that, well, yeah, this is uh, the issue that happened in the past, past life that's yeah. happening now, and this is why it's affecting you. You need to let go of these vows or yeah. whatever vows you may have given yourself in a past life. But if is yeah. there healing from, you know, from going in that space? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, like if you're resonating with with making uh, vows with some to something which you're carrying into the that you're doing right now, stop doing it. Jeez, just stop doing it. But you know, to say you are this person, that person there, that only one, somehow then. We have differentiation again. We 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 are we are separate, rather than you know you can't have unity without having unity. And and the consequences of unity is you are responsible 
for everything in your life, everything and everyone in your life. You're responsible for all your injuries. You're responsible for you know, your family and uh, all of it. And if you change yourself, you change all of that. Wow, what power. What power does that give us, you know? Yeah, that's an interesting one because I know that it's, um, on your YouTube channel there's a number of different videos which I would uh, get people to uh, recommend people to check out. And any links that we're talking about right now uh, are in the uh, description of the YouTube uh, video as well. Just got to show more, and they'll all be down there. But uh, yeah, I mean, you even did some channeling on the uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, right? And yeah. um, uh, you know, anyone that's been a victim of something, right? It's difficult to yeah. say that you know. I I did that, you know, when it's someone else that, that, that we feel has perpetrated us. But are you saying at some level, at a deeper level, there is an agreement, if that's a, the right word for it? It's, it's, a, it's a very tough uh, question to answer, isn't it? Because if you, if whatever you say, someone is going to find fault with it. So, you know, like, uh, and when you come to that, Kevin, it's it, maybe it's just time to say, whatever you believe, you've got. That is your reality, and nobody is going to affect your understanding of your reality unless you decide that it's not working for you. Yes, and even if the reality that you've chosen, where you've, like, for example, I'm doing a, a true crime docuseries just right now as well on the background, and where yeah. people involved in that have chosen to believe a certain narrative, even if it's not true with uh, paperwork, you know, that, that that didn't happen, that's not part of the court case, for example, right, that choosing of that non-truth, in a sense, is what I say their soul needs to break out of whatever issues that they've got, and the, the belief in the non-truth is actually the, the expansion of their soul. It's part of their yeah. journey. Yeah, of course it is. And, you know, and it's the shifting in consciousness of waking up. You know, like if we, if we assume that we're living in a dream world of our own creation, you know, just like your dream, you just, you know, inside your dream, you've got people that you know doing things to you that you don't like. Uh, do you wake up from your dream and go and punch them on the nose because they did that to you in your dream? Well, there'll be some issues with that experience, you know. So what say this is a dream and we're just waking up and recognizing, boy, that was a horrific nightmare I just woke up from. Aren't I lucky? Aren't I absolutely lucky that I woke up from it? Isn't that the whole outline of what this journey might be, though? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and then when you wake up to this new level, this new, that is a shift in consciousness. That is, that is a total break from the old consciousness to the new consciousness. And it's and the, the bigger question is how do you wake up permanently? And how do you? Oh well that is that is a question I I, I have <laughs> I personally have yet to answer. <laughs> but, but do you think we're supposed to? Yes. Oh absolutely. Is the wake up death in a sense? That's or is that another level of wake up that it isn't well yeah look i'm almost saying that and i'm not not saying here that you know we need to die to be able to you know to understand the full nature of reality we're supposed to be here this is we're exactly where we're meant to be but i'm using exactly. it as an, a, an analogy of like uh you know it, it's we're all going to go there aren't we yeah right we're all going to wake up at some point we are the question isn't about whether you're going to wake up, it's whether you can wake up consciously. Be here now. And be here and absolutely be here at, at that, you know, at that operating level where you can see it all. Uh, you are in the world, but not of the world. Well, 
for those who thank you for that for those who may be interested in you know learning to channel in a sense is there a difference between or what is the difference maybe between just channeling your soul or your higher self compared to channeling guides or you know Mercadan as you do is it just as wise and just as helpful to the individual Uh, I'm I I I I'm on thin ice again. See, so having been on thin ice, I, I think that you know any anything that is helpful to someone to to elevate them and to uh, dissipate and get rid of old unnecessary pasts is great. You know. Um, there's always a, t- a tendency to to want to be the best of everything, and and then what happens is you become hooked into your identity, and as soon as you get hooked into your identity, I don't think that's channeling anymore. See, for me, I, and I've taught channeling, I've taught classes, and. And when it gets to the point where I say to them, now give up being who you are, stop it. You are, you are not who you think you are. You, you, you have no identity. You have no history. You have nothing. Don't carry that with you. Then people find that part frightening. And it's, as soon as you have fear, you're not going any further. The door is sh- Shut. If you give it away, if you say, well, actually, I, I am actually of no consequence whatsoever in this. Yeah. I, Francis, give it away. I, I, I don't even exist in this state. I'm, if you like, dead to it. I, you know, this is just the body that I have uh, loaned. To to uh, to another uh, field, if you like, or another energetic uh, activator, to to speak through, and I trust that he or it will do no harm. You know, over over a long period of time, I've learned to trust that. One question I've got is that um, I've always had that fear with public channeling sometimes I mean I've done it but it's always been a fear that uh, you know what if someone asks me something I, I can't answer um, it, you know when I'm in that state and uh, and the, the answer doesn't want to come through for example and I, and I know probably other people have that fear uh, even if they're self channeling as well how have you got past that fear or have you and, and how does that work do you think what advice would you give people look every time that I guess ready to go into a, into the channeling mode, I am fearful. I have got to own it. You know, I go, what if he asks something that is that that is, yeah, and I can't answer. Yeah, you know, Mercadan goes away, and I'm left looking like a fool. Da 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 da. da. I, of course, it's always there, isn't it? And then you you know, I sort of sort of get to that point and I just give over. And there's a point where I where I I have a process, I go through my process, I wait, and there it is. And in the moment that he begins, it's like clear. And I'm gone. And somewhere in the back room, you know, somewhere there's there's some part of me I th- I think is listening, but I, I I have no conscious, you know, because that's given over. So in a, in a sense, um, I've, I have yet to have Mercudan fail on me and he will say to people, I will not answer that question, right? So if somebody asks questions regarding another person, he will say to them, that is somebody else's uh, information, it's not yours. 
So I don't answer that. He also will not give them advice. He will say, not, I won't tell you what to do. If I were to do that, what's the point of you being here? You know, I may as well be here in your place. You know, see, so, so there are things that he will stand up for. Well, thank you for that. Now, I ask this question many times uh, to different people that come on this show, but I think it's an important question. Everyone's got a different take on it. But for yourself, what is channeling to you? I, I think that channeling is giving over and shutting down the brain, shutting down the mental faculty and allowing some uh, other, tuning into some other uh, frequency, some other uh, field that is, that is I, I believe it, it is uh, one of the fields that, that nest us. So it's part of the, if you like, you have your individual field, then you have your family field and your acquaintances and your community fields and out it goes and we get to the global field and we can go beyond that. And then we get to a point where there's a field that overshadows or oversees human evolution. And I think it's giving over and tuning into that resonance, that frequency, and uh, allowing it to um, to you <coughs> to use your <coughs> excuse me um, to use your um, your abilities, your your coding and and your voice and to to express and explain that. So it's, it's really a translation because these fields do not think in language. So you, it's, a, it's a translator. So I believe that I, as, as my body, are actually a translator for consciousness that is Mercuden, much like uh, someone at the United Nations. So someone speaking in a foreign language, the uh, translator translates it, da, 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 does not add or take anything away from it. Just pure translation. You know, funny, all that comes to me when I, um, in this interview, just a little bit before, but mainly in this interview was, I see you teaching, channeling. I see you doing doing that. Yeah, I could definitely do that. I, it, it's an interesting one, you know, because it it would be a it, you know it's it's a challenge to to get you know, but in the end, all the different you know experiences of humankind coming together form you know the 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 basis of human knowledge. And so we we are standing on a pinhead, a pinnacle of, of human evolution. And, uh, and one of the things that, that Merck said is nobody is evolving first, right? Everyone is, goes at once. The shifting consciousness is a singularity, right? So, so we all have to work to get everyone at the on the on the step before you step up, right? That is such an amazing concept, you know, mm -hmm. where where we look at every individual and and go, what can I do to improve their ability, their willingness and their readiness to take a shift in consciousness. Thank you for that. Now, I don't know how easy it is for you to um, zone into, you know, to sort of walk through that door in a sense, yeah, and, uh, and channel, if that's something that you might just want to do 
Uh, we've got just enough time. We're over time right now, and I appreciate you going over time, actually. Uh, there's so much more I could have asked you, but I think we've got uh, a good basis of stuff in there. We, c we could definitely do a channeling bit if you want, if you have the time. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 I've got the time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Kevin, I'm going to... The, the first thing that I do is I have a, a shawl, which I, which I always put on. Now, my shawl is what I call a contextual marker. So the contextual marker says, I'm not open to having things come in while I'm in the shopping mall. Right? I am only willing when I say I'm willing which is this marker. So we mark the moment. We go, right, okay. We're now getting into the space for this. And then I have a little ritual and then we'll begin. When, when I begin, what Merkur Dan will do is he'll give a very short um, introduction and then he will say, let's begin a conversation. And then you can ask questions or whatever. Okay? So just give us, I don't know, a few moments. Once again, it is my privilege and pleasure to come and spend these few moments of your time. Mm -hmm. Humanity lives mm, in interesting times. Mm. I want to say, mm, in essence, the entire cosmos mm, lives mm, in such times, the entire cosmos is the creation of all consciousness. Whatever framework it belongs in. And so, shall we say, the more you look, the deeper you penetrate, the more sophisticated instruments you see more and more and more of the cosmos. And you start to see the points of light that shine in the overall darkness that envelops everything. So shall we say, from the darkness comes the penetration, the spark from the flint, if you like, once it is struck and each and every speck is consciousness. So every individual mm, is a spark mm, struck mm, in the endlessness mm, that is consciousness, mm, that is enough to begin a conversation. Mm. So you have a question that you would mm, like to put forward. Yes, Merkadan, it's lovely to have you on the show, and uh, I really do enjoy uh, your energy and Francis as well. So, uh, thank you for arranging this. Um, yeah, so many questions, and I know we've got just the, in this reality, there's just not enough time, right? But I think, firstly, we are in this time of uh, great change, and uh, yourself and so many others that are open to their gifts have uh, talked about this emerging time that we now find ourselves at the very beginning of. 
are we at the beginning, would you say, of the time of great change, or are we sort of uh, halfway in it? It feels like we're at the beginning. The beginning. Now Sorry. we say you are at the end of it. Mm, what an exciting time! Mm, you understand? Mm, mm, you are mm, mm. a shift in consciousness mm, is instantaneous, mm, but it takes years to get there. You have been preparing and preparing and collecting and bringing along and honing your abilities and uplifting the soul energy of the entire universe. And then suddenly everything is ready. And suddenly there is an elevation that I could say is a single mm, bit of knowledge becomes mm, certain. mm, And with certainty, mm, shall we say, mm, everyone wakes up to the consequence of it. Mm, Does this make some sort of sense? It does. Definitely the consequence of it. Yes, that is true. Mm. You understand, it isn't the shift in consciousness that is quite as important as the consequences that come about. Right. Okay. Obviously, there's a lot of um, unrest. There's a lot of things breaking down. And I guess that's part of the change as well as things have to break down for change to happen as well. Um but there's a lot of people maybe thinking, well, you know, with such a change going on in the world, there's a lot of fear of the outcome of uh, geopolitical issues as well right now. Um, how can people change th- their, the world in a sense that, that, that they don't enjoy seeing? What can they do in their mm. own lives? Shall we say this? Hmm? Everything is a co-creation. Hmm? Everything is an alignment. You, what is the problem? Is too many people have joined one side or other of a conflict, and of course, if you join one side of a conflict, then of course the other side has to be in balance. So look at the world, it is out of alignment, out of balance. It is one side, I am the, in the right and you are in the wrong, rather than recognizing my decisions, my thoughts, my identity is aligned with one outcome only, to win. And if I am to win, then those that I judge as being in the wrong must lose. And I will fight, 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 and fight, and fight. And I will claim it that I am loving you by killing you. You understand what nonsense. So if you want to change yourself, then change yourself. Take yourself out of the game. Realize that you are not allowed to stop someone else playing the Monopoly board. But you can take your children and go to the park where everybody can have fun and nobody is winning and nobody is better than. Some people have skills that they have developed and others have different skills. But When you put all the skills together, what a wonderful park you have. Hmm? Do you follow what time? I I know. I know what you mean. And uh, the park's a great place as well. If uh, you've got a family and just want to hang out there and chill out and uh, uh, just experience the bliss. And And have a go yourself. Hmm? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) 
flying fox, huh? speeding um, through the air. Hmm? You understand? Hmm? And yes, you could fall off. It could break. All sorts of hmm, 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 different traumas are possible. Hmm? But you have to risk life to live. Hmm? Otherwise, hmm, what are you doing? Hmm? You are hmm, simply moving through space as you understand it, hmm, moving through space and hmm, the limitations of time. Hmm? When hmm, in the eternal present, hmm, only the eternal present. Hmm? And the biggest gift of all is turning up, hmm, present yourself as a present to everybody. Hmm? What a wonderful birthday hmm? in the true sense of the word. Absolutely. And what you're saying there on the sort of, you know, macro and uh, on the larger scale as well, but on the smaller scale of coming from that space of um Yes, not being uh, judging or, um, you know, I'm right, you're wrong. But that, you know, and, and that could be just in the family, that could be in a relationship, that could be with work, that could be on a global, you know, global footing as well, especially with the conflicts taking place right now. So I get what you're saying there. But to come from that space, right, of maybe just holding even people accountable and not judging, even to come from that space takes a spiritual awakening to see it from a different perspective, the, the more karmic perspective of why things happen as they happen, though. Of course. Hmm? And how many hmm, people know what is true? Hmm? You are hmm, just listening hmm, to opinions hmm? and lots of twisted footage of movies that you have no way of hmm, identifying anything. Hmm? So you are fed hmm, all sorts of nonsense. You are not told the entirety. Of course, it is what is called secret information. It is, it is, shall we say, sensitive. It is corporate. Do you understand? Nobody is told everything. And so you are living your life based on what? But if you live your life based on your experience, what is happening inside of yourself? What can I transform in myself so I feel better? I am experiencing and I am expressing the best person I can possibly be. And I am giving my thoughts and uplifting those in my field of influence. That is, I am giving my children all sorts of positive mm, affirmations. Mm? I am saying mm, how well they are doing and mm, offering maybe a little bit of experience, not mm, putting them down. Mm, they are not perfect, but mm, mm, how you would do it if you were mm, having mm, the same mm, drives, if you like. Do you understand? In the small time, it looks as if you are just being self-centered, if you like, but your children go to school with other children and they influence that group and so on and so on. And you, with your colleagues and your friends and your acquaintances and your mm, your parents and so on. The field gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it mm, starts to influence everything. Mm? You find new friends that you resonate with mm, and you become mm, a greater mm, beacon. Mm? And suddenly mm, there is more and more awakening. 
more and more offering of, shall we say, the difficulties that some people experience and how you uplift them from it. Why? Because you have uplifted yourself. You have taken yourself out of the depressions. You have stopped depressing yourself. You have stopped putting weight on your shoulders, thinking about what is happening in the other side of the world as if there is not a total agreement. And I put that in parenthesis because the agreements are, shall we say, within the fields that communities and nations hold. You understand, you have had world wars and very often the field of a nation holds judgment and all sorts of need for retribution on others. And so on it goes and you have other interests and you think my job is to look after my interests. You understand? And so the world is looking after its national interests, its trading interests and separation and separation and separation and on it goes until there is a true understanding of unification, of integration, coming together to, shall we say, bring humans to a higher level of understanding. And shall we say your climate crisis is one such thing. Of course, you cannot solve it individually, nor as a nations and so on. There has to be agreements, and unfortunately, everyone has to give away the old patterns. The planet, the planet guardian will survive. The planet guardian will bring humanity to its knees. So, shall we say, the best that any single person can do in this moment of history, shall we say, is to align themselves with the planetary guardian. And shall we talk about channeling the planetary guardian? What does the planetary guardian wish for me to do? What can I do for you? How can I serve the planetary guardian? Because I am a king. And because I am a king, I am a servant to the whole. Do you understand what I am saying? I do, because everything's one. And everything you're saying really is all, in a sense, the more we come from love for everything including ourselves right and others um th- you know that that's part of that great change i mean you don't you need to use the words any spiritual kind of jargon in that because everything you've said there is you know the fundamentals of what what love is you know once you start going of more course. towards that energy of course and when you open up to this concept i want to say the difficulty for humans is love is so diversely described you think love is some sort of connection or whatever but let us say love is the unification it is you can always tell when you are truly able to love. Nobody is judged. You do not 
look at others, the criminals or whatever, and make them bad people. They are those, shall we say, surviving in the world that they have created for themselves. And they have created it in co-creation with those around them. They live in a field that is out of sorts. Do you follow? And inside of it, is there any love? Inside of that field, there is fear and there is hatred. There is anger and dissatisfaction. Do you understand? And so it is that one can only elevate oneself in consciousness, recognize this is a dream that you are experiencing. Wake up. Waking up, first of all, is that waking up that it is a dream, that you are lying in your bed thinking about the dream that you have just pulled yourself out of. You are still on the edges of it. You understand it is still there in your perception. You can see all the actors and you can follow what was happening and then you slowly let it go and you wake up to the day. And maybe you remember, I had a dream. And maybe you remember some of the elements in the dream. And maybe you can recognize the elements in the dream are speaking about yourself. Hmm? And that is the truth. Yes, and I know we don't have much more time left here, and I appreciate everything you're saying because it's so, so important right now, right? And, uh, oh gosh, I could go so many tangents from what you've just said there, but I think the most important thing really is... um, well, actually, you've given me an aha moment. I'll be honest with you, actually. I see why I'm going to be doing this International Spiritual News Network, um, because we're going to look at the news from a karmic perspective, that, you know, the, the deeper spiritual reason, or, the, you know, that, that more loving reason behind why people are doing what they're doing, that, you, know, you know, the alternative reason of what's really going on, on a soul level. Of course. And you understand, like all conflicts, somebody benefits. There was an old saying in your world, follow the money and you will find at least who it is that is benefiting. I understand you have time constraints in the physical world. I think what you're saying is that the world won't look too different in a sense, if we were to come uh, once we, you know, if we, when this shit, as the, as we go through this shift, in a sense, maybe, right? But uh, the way we are with each other would be completely different. It would be totally different. So maybe there'd be less wars. There'd be less fighting for so many things, right? And if we could come from that space, but with so many souls wanting to come down here, is that, I, w- I mean, it just seems that, you know, this is a long way off, but Speak to one thing. In the spiritual world, in the world of soul, there is unity. There, one does not then own a soul. There is one soul incarnating into diverse identities for the purpose of experience experimenting, experiencing, and expressing. Hmm? You understand that. Hmm? So shall we say, hmm, every idea anyone has, hmm, has a consequence. And every consequence one experiences hmm, hmm, comes from hmm, hmm, an idea that is 
planted mm, in the mind mm, because it is planted mm, and watered. Mm. You have to look after it. You have to keep feeding it in order for it to grow. Mm. So if you look at the consequence mm, that you have in your life mm, and find where it mm, comes from, what is mm, growing in there, mm, shall we say, and stop feeding it. Do you follow what I mean? Because in the end, the creation arises from ideas. Do you understand what I mean? If you look at this, many people across the planet have, shall we say, what you would call epiphany moments when they when they read an idea that resonates with them, they think they are, have created something new, as if it is their creation. But in reality, it was already existing, waiting to be read in the conscious field that contains all things. Hmm? Do you follow what I mean? I do. And um, Merkadan, I really appreciated this connection. And I really do hope, actually, that we get to connect again. I really do. So thank you. And if there's any final message, then you can give that. But just thank you for your time right now. I also want to say thank you for your time, for your work in consciousness, because every time you uplift and you bring to those that see and watch you, then you shift so many myriad of fields of activity. So once again, thank you and good evening. Well, Francis, that was absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm going to say that I so enjoyed that. And I don't like to say, you know, oh, that, you know, that was, that's one of my favorites, but it, it's definitely up there in my tops. Um, very powerful. Well, thank you. Thank you for your time and, and for the ability to talk to the audience and, uh, yeah, yeah. Pe people are going to enjoy this. I really, uh, that was a few aha moments there. Let me just say that, <laughs> which I wasn't expecting. You never quite know. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I, yeah, yeah, in the moment. Um, and uh, no, that was really, really good. Um, so just thank you for that. And I hope you get to watch it back as well. So your website, one last time, Francis, is? Um, <clears throat> channelingmercredan.com two L's in the channeling yeah we we are we are British <laughs> yeah because the way yeah. I've got it spelled is C-H-A-N-N-E-L Angie that's right it's American yeah <laughs> the American yeah. yes yeah yeah <laughs> um, okay well look until we meet nice. again yeah nice to, to talk with you Kevin thank you for your time and I do hope we We'll talk again. Yes, I think we're going to have to. Uh, that was uh, so good. So uh, just thank you so, so much for joining us today. Thank you.